Greetings, Unsettled Souls. Sam Mai B, reporting for the Media Speaks. Welcome back to The Correct Views. If you are watching live, feel free to join in. Uh, you can send me a... Uh, you, if, I just got a double ding. If, it, somebody joined me? I think I was joined. Not sure. If you have joined me, welcome aboard. That was fast. Um, if you have a webcam, join me. You can try to chat me. If I miss it, it's not on purpose. I'm going to be going through articles, but you are always invited to do so. We have a whole ton of news to get to, so what I'm going to do is minimize the screen that might have my guest, which is how I might not see your chat, and get into the news. CNBC. America falls behind in creating rich entrepreneurs. This doesn't surprise me a bit, but it's abysmal exactly how far behind we've fallen. I mean, it's, it's we were we like being thrown behind. That is that's like saying, uh, you know, it, it, it's a stumble. It's not a stumble when you plummet fifteen thousand feet. That is the analogy that I would like to use for this. Then it gets to the end and it says something dumb, and I'm going to tell you why. Dumb de dumb. The creation myth of American wealth is almost always rooted in the entrepreneur. It's the two kids who start a computer company in their garage or dorm room, or the former stand-up comic who creates form-shaping undergarments, or the South African immigrant who creates a new electric car in a private space program. But despite these high-profile examples, you're not supposed to start a sentence with but. America might actually be falling behind the rest of the world when it comes to creating entrepreneurial wealth. A new study from Berkeley's Orig Origins and Legacy of the Changing Order of Wealth Creation finds that developing countries now lead the U.S. when it comes to wealth creation. It tells you how they figured this out. I'm going to give it to you. Then I'm going to give you the disgusting, awful, despicable freaking news that I have. Worldwide, 40% of millionaires, which is defined as those with investable assets of 1.5 million or more, cited a business sale and profit, quote, that is important, remember those words, business sale and profit for their businesses as their source of wealth. One quarter of the millionaires cited inheritance as their wealth source, so only a quarter of the people were already rich prior. That's still a lot. 25% of the people in this country are already rich. In other words, uh, I'm sure less millionaires all the time. <clears throat> I'd like to get anybody know a study on that? Feel free to drop it on my comment line. In the U.S., the only only 21% of millionaires cited business sale or profit as their source of wealth. A much larger percentage cited saving, saved earnings or personal investments as their sources of wealth. Um, that's, that's bad. Entrepreneurship, the starting of businesses for you top 40 fans, is dead in this country. Well, not dead, but dying on the verge of death. Asian Pacific, 57%. Europe, 41%. That's all of Europe. All of Europe. All of the Asian Pacific. Middle East, 48%. East? Wait. I'm not even going to say it. South Africa, 68%. South Africa just learned how to feed itself, which is good. How in the world are they doing this? I can tell you. Latin America, 58%. What are they running here for? U.S., 21%. I'll, I'll tell you why this is after the dumb cuff uh, here tells you what it is. In the Asian Pacific, 57 oh, I'm not going to read. I'll let you read those. There is some evidence that entrepreneurship is flagging. The latest data from Kauffman Foundation found that there were 514,000 new business owners a month in 2012, down from 543,011. The 12 numbers marked the lowest in five years. And it says that the reason that this is happening, um, where is this? 
These developing markets have a much shorter history of widespread wealth creation, and many of the high net worth individuals in these markets are first generation wealthy. And why is that? It said the uh, difference between the countries as a basic wealth cycles, wealth in developing countries is newer, and therefore there is more wealth from freshly minted companies than from savings or investments. Does anybody else smell the pile of BS that is in the room? I don't know whether or not, who, who wrote this thing, I know it's on CNBC, who wrote this? Robert Frank, Robert, did you laugh when you had to put this in? And why in the world didn't you tell your readership what I'm about to tell my listenership? The reason that America's entrepreneurship is falling into the toilet can be described in one word. Regulations. Regulations. I'm going to give you a personal story that I bet you, I'm going to make, a, I'm going to bet you something. My comment line is going to be filled with people telling the same story that I'm about to tell you. You watch. This is what's wrong with entrepreneurship in America. When I was growing up, my dad had a decent job. My mom stayed at home. He was an LPN. And then he got on disability later in life, and that ate up most of the savings that he had. Uh, he had degenerative disc disease. He couldn't walk from, you know, from here to the bathroom, which is the next room over from my studio, in under 10 minutes. I mean, it was that bad. And um, to make a long story short, my adult, my young adult life, I, I didn't see college till I was almost 30. Graduated with a degree in IMT and uh, music theory kind. Of. Um, and then I went to start a business. Of course, out of high school, I was working at a pizza shop. There was no money for me to go to school because my dad was on disability. And I was too young. Now, they say when you have a parent on some kind of assistance that it is, uh, it's beneficial for the child. That's not true at all. What they did is said that he used to be an LPN and therefore he probably has money saved. They didn't say that. It was implied. And therefore he's got money to send you to school. Well, the act of getting on the disability, which is where I be started to become a libertarian more and more and more and more. I mean, I already was by the time that he was uh, disabled. But watching him try to get on it just proved that the states are much better equipped to handle this than, uh, than the government is on so many fronts. And this is one way. It was just terrible. It ate up most of his savings. And uh, so I was working minimum wage jobs forever. Finally got out of college. I was well into my 30s. Got my IMT degree. Got a decent paying job. Um and wanted to open up a nightclub with my brother. Nobody, nobody would loan a nickel to me because while I was going through school, while I was working minimum wage jobs, my credit was destroyed. When it wasn't a minimum wage job, I'll go right out there and tell you where it was. Yellow Cab is, uh, the, the owner, Fred Nero, is the greediest man that ever lived. He takes all of his driver's money and leaves them with barely enough to pay the rent. Uh, various jobs like that. Uh, telemarketing, hack jobs. All the good jobs, of course, being sent out of the country. The Timken Company, for those of you that know what scum they are. Uh, have uh, closed down much of their work in this area. The Hoover Company destroyed this area. Never buy a Hoover. Never, unless it's used. To make a long story short, after doing what it is they want you to do, you gotta go to school. I, mean, I went to school to learn things I already knew. I knew as much, almost as much music theory when I got to school as I did when I graduated. The only reason I got more when I went to college was because the teacher had seen that I already knew it and he had a master's in music, so then he gave me a whole bunch of stuff that I should have never even had. So, yes, I learned more in college, but there's an asterisk by that. I shouldn't have. So I did all the things they wanted me to do, and in doing so, ended up destitute. And there was no money for me to start a club now that I got turned around. Why? Because a liquor license can be $105,000. Because there is red tape. I'm not saying you should never have a health inspection of any kind, but to the degree and the frequency, and uh, the, the, you know they control so much that they don't need to control the zoning laws, the this, the that, the this, the that. People 
cannot afford to start a business here and all of the good jobs have been sent away. That is the correct view. No other view needs to even be debated because you're crazy. I don't really mean it like that, but for him to say that there's the boneheaded, ex well, the wealth is newer in the other countries, no! The other countries don't have people telling them how many feet need to be between the bathroom, toilet, and the wall! And you don't have to pay $85 for some idiot in a suit to tell you! That's the difference! FukushimaDiary.com, it's actually Fukushima-Diary.com, uh, somebody bought Fukushima Diary and I went there and it was, eh. make sure you look up this one. This is awful news, this is for Kevin Blanch, I, I don't know, did he join me and I missed his thing, uh, I saw him online, but I think, I hate Facebook, Facebook gave me his message 13 hours late that he posted on his wall, but it gave it to me as if it was new. And I invited him, hoping uh, to get a hold of him. But he mentioned that it had been a, s a slow period for nuclear news. And by dumb luck, I had this ready to cover. So he's invited. And of course, you still are. Former decontamination volunteer in Fukushima has a ca had a cancer in his throat. Um, any weird reading of this is because it's translated into English, so it's not me drunk. Um, they were telling us, Oh, cancer takes a long time to develop after nuclear exposure. You would need to have an astronomical amount of nuclear poisoning for anyone to see cancers soon. Well, a little over two years since the tidal wave caused Fukushima disaster. And for those of you that don't know how bad the disaster is, this happened in two years' time. From 2011 to early 2012, Fukushima Diary has been reporting about the Citizens Decontamination Group, HCR. TEPCO, that is GE in America, if you buy anything from GE, you are supporting these kinds of things, so don't ever buy them unless it's used. I always say that because if something is used, then they don't get money from its purchase. Um, TEPCO admitted the responsibility of 164 becquerels per kilogram and uh, was contaminated well water. That is 164 reactions per second in your body, for those of you that don't know what a becquerel is. Black substance emits, emits 45.699 sieverts per hour of alpha rays. Uh, that is the black substance. After the Fukushima disaster, there was a, uh, a, a black, tarry, sticky, moldy-like substance that was everywhere. That is the fallout accumulating, and uh, I think it poisons many of the, the living organisms that are in it, among other things, and ultimately it goes black. Um, some of you with more nuclear knowledge fill, me, fill in a better way to describe it, but in a nutshell. And uh, the life from around there, I guess it was within 20 kilometers is what it means. Uh, a Buddhist monk, Mihura Bensho, M-I-U-R-A-B-A-N-S-H-O, who led HCR, commented on Twitter that he had a cancer in his throat. Oh, but it takes a long time for cancer to develop, Sam. This Fukushima stuff you're talking about, it's ridiculous. I've been having a problem with my throat since one year ago. I figured out it was a cancer. Yesterday, I had it removed in Shana Kamakura General Hospital. Tissues were sent to pathology. The trouble is, is that this is a forerunner of things that are doomed to happen to us. And absolutely nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear that it's time to shut down nuclear power plants that it's time to get rid of these sorts of things why we are still alive to do so. And nobody wants to address that. They just want to address the money that is involved. Do you know Arne Gunderson? Uh, look, go to fairwinds.com. Arne Gunderson has a proposal to clean up Fukushima and they said that they couldn't do it because it was too expensive. So these sorts of things happen when there is a solution out there today. Go to fairwinds.com. I know I'm, I'm, a lot of you don't like Arnie Gunderson. The point is, he's right here. 
Um, I called him and was running him for an interview and I had asked him about an idea I had to uh, help with Fukushima and I, I got a really arrogant reply. But the point is, nobody knows as much in this area as Arne Gunderson knows. It doesn't matter if I think he's the greatest man in the world or if I think he's somewhat on the too good to talk to you side. It doesn't matter. The man, what matters is the man is either right or wrong. He is right. He has a solution to this problem here. So go to fairwinds.com and uh, look at some of the work he has. He's talked about it extensively. Um, God forbid, contact him. <laughs> I, I'm being facetious here, but contact him and I'm sure he'll tell you more about it. Point is, they put money over people's lives. And that's TEPCO, that's GE, bringing good things to life. Last thing I want to get to before the break, I'm not ending yet, don't panic. Accident rates rise at intersections with speed cameras. Uh, Donna Anderson, InfoWars. Not only do speed cameras create accidents, they don't even do anything to stop us, uh, to, to, uh, to really help give tickets to legitimate people that break crime, that can break laws half the time. It's always something mundane. They'll tell you that those speed cameras help make the roadways safer, but states and countries across the nation are reporting an increase in accident rates instead. The only thing that those speed cameras are really good for is raising revenue, and they're not very good at that. More on that in a second. Because everybody thinks they're making a lot of money off them. The only people that are making a lot of money off of them is uh, the state, the, the, the state, not like your state, the state, the, the authorities making money off of these to a small degree, and then of course all the money tied in with the cameras and the contracts that come through. In her June 6th report it says that the Infowars.com's Ernetta said, Gigi, Gigi, Ernetta, Gigi, Gigi, little girls, uh, I forget to play, my dad would kill me. Judge Robert R. Ruhlman of Hamilton, Ohio, said that the Elmwood Place speed cameras were just a case of three-card Monty, or a sham. And in Baltimore, one of those dependable speed cameras gave a speeding ticket to a motionless car. Judges really, you know, have destroyed this country and some of their ruling. Thank God for people like this. It goes on, and it's important enough that I'm going to as well. Speed cameras are generally installed at dangerous high-traffic intersections as a way to pass the legislation and fund the project. Lawmakers claim they'll help reduce accidents because knowing there's a camera in the intersection will cause people to stop instead of speeding through the intersection before the light changes. As a cab driver, I could have told you just from watching people and being on the road for nine years, that wasn't going to be the case. However, a study conducted by the New Jersey Department of Transportation shows that accident rates actually increase at intersections with cameras. Drivers are forced to make split-second decisions, speed up, and hope the light doesn't change before they make it through the intersection, or slam on the brakes and risk being rear-ended. Either way, there's an accident just waiting to happen. How many people got rear-ended and got a ticket of a much higher degree because they obeyed the law. Now it's not important that one person is, pay is a great driver and doesn't miss this light. What's more important is that both drivers are smart because the other one needs to remember that he needs to never tailgate. So now you need two drivers that are very good at the same time at the same intersection all the time. Nice thinking, people. Real nice thinking. That and the fact that, as I've covered in earlier episodes, go look, it's posted on The Correct Views, youtube.com slash thecorrectviews, about how they're shortening the yellow lights in order to raise revenue this way as well. Red light cameras are just another way for counties and cities to steal millions from citizens while denying due process of law, says Anurta. But according to reports, the cities aren't even doing that well. Due to poor quality photos and fake tickets, Counties and cities using speed cameras aren't bringing in as much money as you would think. In 09, Pena County, Arizona reported two cameras were activated 11,416 times from 07 to 09 and 7,290 citations. Only 3,711 3, were paid, totaling 124,199.42 in fines collected. 
After administrative fees, it left the county a net profit of only $12,391.58, which lawmakers considered a paltry sum. And it is, considering how much it costs to run a city or a municipality. What would happen if all 7,290 didn't pay? That's the way we win. That's how we beat these over-the-top DUI laws. I've gone over it at nauseum. Go to the spring cleaning show where I mention it in depth. Don't pay. If all 7,000 of them didn't pay, what would they do? You can't put 7,000 people in jail for running a red light. They can go after you, I know, and go after your points and all that. Just refuse to pay any of it. Keep driving. They're going to get so backlogged if even 25% of a state were to do that that you'd find that they would only arrest the people that really did something wrong. Why? Because that's all they could afford to do. It sounds like the only ones who really profit from the speed cameras are the insurance companies who get to raise your rates when you're rear-ended in a traffic light and the speed camera company itself. Very good article. I could not agree more. Um, Nitro-pack.com. Do me a favor. Don't, don't run to the bathroom while I'm reading. Go run to the bathroom if you want while I'm reading this. But turn it up so that you can hear what it is that I'm talking about. I'm going to go at this from the side that the other people at the media speaks have not. Uh, many people have talked about how good of a prepping service uh, Nitro Pack is. And it is. However, a lot of you listening to this are not preppers. Because the correct views tends to appeal to a lot of people that don't normally follow the news. Well, I don't know. Do any of you camp? Do any of you enjoy going outside and in, uh, being uh, being able to really enjoy your time while you're out while you're out there? Because they've got power pot USB phone chargers for one hundred and eighty nine dollars, and they've got I mentioned that because it's the uh, chargers that you know you can use wherever you go. And they've got heaters. They've got everything you need. They've got tents of every possible shape, matter, or form. They've got first aid kits. They've got, I mean, I'm just going to go over a few of the first aid kits since I said it real quick. Here we go. Um, you buy one of these, you're, you're good for a while. First aid kits. Right there, as soon as you click in. Prices range anywhere from $6.50 for a pocket medic. They've got the uh, Evacuate Heavy Duty Stretcher for uh, $32.95. Hopefully nobody you're camping with would need that. Uh, Quick Clot. They've got it for $11.95. Now, Quick Clot you are going to need, especially if you're as clumsy as I've been known to be. So, hey, do me a favor. Go to the Mediaspeaks.com when you check out the... Um, when you check out Nitro Pack, don't just go to Nitro Pack because we get a kickback when you help us by shopping this way. I'm not afraid to admit it. Uh, Kyle Phillips and I were saying the other day, not only do we stand behind them, they stand behind us. So do me a favor, people. When you go to the Mediaspeaks.com and you need to, click on the Nitro Pack link, pick something up, and you'll be helping the Media Speaks, and you'll be helping the correct views. Um, this is news on the Eric Snowden hero front. Leaker vows on NSA access to tech servers. He's going to give more details, guys. USAToday.com. Leaker vows details on NSA access to tech servers. NSA leaker Edward Snowden answering questions Monday in a live blog on his revelations about the top secret agency denied that he was spying for China and vowed to release more details on the NSA's direct access to the tech company's servers. Truth is coming and it cannot be stopped, he said to The Guardian, which held a live chat on its website. He said the U.S. government is not going to be able to cover this up by jailing or murdering me. Good. Snowden, a former NSA contractor who fled the United States after revealing top secret details of the government's collections of Americans' phone and internet records, a violation of the Fourth Amendment for you top 40 boneheads that don't know why it's a big deal, that still support Obama when he was spying on your phone and your internet. You would have loved it if Bush did it too, right? I bet. Not that he was a good president either. 
phone and internet records of Americans, he said he does not expect to ever see home again. Snowden, who took immediate refuge in Hong Kong, also denied any plans to give information to China or in exchange for asylum. Former Vice President Dick Cheney told Fox News Sunday that he thinks Snowden is a traitor. Well, that's funny. I like, I like what he says here. Being called a traitor by Dick Cheney is the highest honor you can give an American, Snowden responded. And the more panicked talk we hear from people like him and Dianne Feinstein and Peter King, the better off we all are. So these are the people that, and again, I supported Bush at the beginning of this, but you've got to remember the Patriot Act was supposed to be temporary. That's why I didn't have a big problem with it. And of course, again, he says he's not a Chinese spy. If he was, why, would he, why wouldn't he have flown directly to Beijing? He could be living in a palace petting a phoenix by now, he said. It's very true. He is going to continue to come out with these things, and I support him in doing so, and I'm not afraid to say it openly. If it turns out that he did something, you know, that he was somehow, look at this, Sam, you were wrong, he really did uh, betray the nation. And then at that point, I'll, you know, I'll listen and I'll be a little softer on my support for him. But as it stands right now, I, I have nothing but absolute admiration for what the man has done for us. And yes, I said for us, not to us. Um, I'm going to get to just a couple more stories. Secret Service invades the home of Obama critic over Twitter, Twitter followers. Somebody, that's, I have a Twitter account. Check me out uh, on, on Correct Views Twitter. I don't know. I, I don't get the whole tweeting thing. I don't think it's really. I, I I have to say it's the least active of all of the Correct Views accounts, except maybe Daily Motion, which I used specifically for the Alex Jones contest. But I don't know. I guess enough people read Twitter that the government feels that. Oh, how many was it? I think he said he had like 11,000 listeners. Basically, a cartoonist was visited by the Secret Service. They didn't do anything to him, but you could tell they tried to intimidate him and told him that he should watch what he does because some lunatic, some lunatic could shoot the president because of something he says. That's boneheaded. If you listen to my show and you shoot the president, don't blame it on me. I don't want any Secret Service scum asking me about it either. Because I never at any point want to see anything happen to Obama. Among all other things, I cherish human life, even his. Second of all, if anyone were to kill him, you have made him a martyr. You have made him a great person like Martin Luther King. Don't do that. Do not let this man have anything in common with true greatness. Please keep him alive and well. I am sick and tired of looking out the window to see if Old Glory is still flying, writes Tara Dodrell of Off the Grid News, to reaffirm my shaky belief that I still reside in America. Francois never threatened the president. He's, that's the artist. He simply lambasts and lampoons his actions, his facial expression, and unconstitutional policies. The most thin-skinned president in the history of the Republic has proven once again that he has nothing but disdain for the First Amendment. The Secret Service agent, it continues, ar agents arrived at the home of Tom Francois, I think it's Francois, F-R-A-N-C-O-I-S, and asked if they could come inside and take a look around. Noting that he had nothing to hide and not wanting to see his things tossed about if the agents were forced to wait for the waiver, the avid political cartoon creator let the men inside. Francois maintains that while he loathes Barack Obama's policies, he has never threatened his being in any way, shape, or form. I scanned hundreds of Francois's tweets, the author writes, which were cited for reasons for the Secret Service agents arriving on his porch, and saw nothing violent, just the same felt by millions of constitutional-loving patriots. Um, his mistake was actually letting them into his home without a warrant. They went through his computer and everything. And again, it's not whether or not he has something to hide that is important here. What matters more than anything is whether or not the Secret Service is trying to become threatening, like the Gestapo was, trying to really intimidate those that don't agree with them, just pushing more and more and more 
to shut everything down that has anything against the system at all. And if that's what's happening, we need to make sure that it doesn't happen, or that or shows like this simply won't be allowed to exist anymore. Last thing I want to get to, uh, this is from uh, CBS DC. Supreme Court rules as Arizona cannot require voters to prove U.S. citizenship. They're saying that the you know, motor voter bill and that but once you can register, you, you're automatically in and that it breaks federal law to have Arizona do this. Well, Arizona has a, a right to its state laws and federal laws should not supersede state laws. And second of all, it's absolutely imperative, by the way, to understand this. We don't want illegals voting in our country! The Supreme Court ruled Monday that states cannot, on their own, require would-be voters to prove that they are U.S. citizens before using a federal registration system designed to make voting si signing up easier. It's not very hard to sign up to vote. Whether you are a foreigner or whether you are born in this country, if you cannot figure that out, I don't have any sympathy for you because you're an idiot. The justices voted 7-2 to throw out Arizona's voter approved requirement that prospective voters document their U.S. citizenship in order to use a registration form produced <coughs> under the federal motor voter voter registration law. Which of course with uh, illegals getting licenses so that we know where they are to be safer, and then the motor voter bill is simply at some point going to allow this to happen. You know how? By allowing illegal immigration into the country, which I didn't used to have a problem with, but it's out of control now, for one. Second of all, whatever party panders to them the most, and at some point they almost have to if the illegal immigration population takes over the nation like it's going to do at some point, whoever panders to the illegal immigrant the most gets the best votes. Gets the most votes, I should say. Does anybody see how that can be a destruction to the American political system regardless of which side of the aisle you are on? That is definitely the correct views. Thank you very much for listening. Do me a favor, please donate if you can. Every penny that you donate to this show goes directly to this show. <coughs> Make sure you go to TheMediaSpeaks.com as well. Look up the work of Kyle, Corp, D. Lake, and myself. We work very hard on that site to give you the very best news coverage, so please support us. And lastly, don't forget Dana Mobley Christ. You can look her up through the Charity Connection on Facebook.com. She has lung cancer, and she's somebody that runs a charity that has helped so many people all the time. So let's do a favor, and uh, let's get a lot of money up there so that she can beat the cancer and then continue to help people. Thank you, friends, for listening. Good night, and God bless.